Thunder Bay Atacokan MPP, Kevin Holland at NOMA. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is really indeed a privilege to return to this year's NOMA conference with our municipal and community leaders, as well as the ministers that were able to join us. This marks my 34th year of attending NOMA conferences, and I really appreciate the Board of Directors inviting me to participate and to provide comments and remarks. Connecting with so many folks during the hallways, chats, delegations, for which, by the way, we are very grateful to be offered this year, truly, truly motivates and reminds us to keep doing what we must do to promote Northwestern Ontario. I'd like to thank Ministers Calandra, Dunlop, Lache, Parsa, Rickford, Smith, and Thompson, not just for accepting the invitation to participate in the Minister's Forum, but also for taking the time to meet with some of our stakeholders. Creating the opportunities for our government to connect directly with and learn from our community experts and stakeholders will always remain a priority of our government. We will continue to embrace any opportunity to showcase the people and talent behind the economic capacity and growth potential of Northwestern Ontario. The NOMA conference seen this year of building a brighter future with a regional economic development focus is certainly in keeping with what has been at the very core of the work being undertaken and accomplished in partnership with our stakeholders and government. Quality economic development, especially regional economic development, matters. It matters because it is place-based, responsive to uneven geographic conditions and unique re regional conditions and challenges, and therefore must be comprehensive in scope and approach. Right now, at this time in Northwestern Ontario, we have a critical need for community leadership, influencers, strategic alliances, and all levels of government from all political parties to inspire a collective approach to community and regional capacity building. The economic potential of, on the horizon for the Northwest at this time demands purposeful and intentional actions and investments now. We will not regain the opportunities before us for some decades to come shall we fail to engage all of our stakeholders at the right time and in ways that strengthens our currency of credibility. For this reason, the election mandate my team and I have committed to and could succinctly be described using three pillars for growth and resilience. They are connecting people and place prosperity, community health and well-being, and economic development and sustainability. There will, this will require the vision, preparedness and willingness necessary to mobilize all of community and all of region plans of action with clear data-driven measurable outputs. Organizations such as NOMA and AMO will continue to play significant roles in supporting capacity building so that all of our municipalities, most especially our smaller rural communities, have the tools and resources they need to achieve growth. The place-based approach to holistic community development recognizes a community and its surrounding communities as an ecosystem, where businesses are part of a broad network of economic and public organizations that not only, can, that not only coexist, but they may also collaborate through mutually beneficial relationships. Many policy decisions related to community development are influenced by place-based stakeholders, including community organizations and local elected officials. This means that the most advantageous way to ensure that our communities and region receive the attention they deserve and the, that incentives of align with local needs is to develop proficiency and influence at the community level. Now more than ever, it is evident that we need problem solvers across all sectors and all levels of government who can transcend silos. We must understand that all investments which support any type of growth Sector and sector also builds and develops the assets, capital, and networks of individual people and households. Truly transport, transformational community and regional economic development necessitates community agency and participation in our collaborative social well-being, economic activities, and the development of our place and region. While it is true that all levels of government must con conscientiously seek ways to work together for the betterment of all people, communities and regions. It is especially true that we look to the federal government to play a significant role in modernizing regional economic development and that they commit to rewarding what matters. 
It is also true that modern devolution requires our federal government to invest in our leaders and organizations who know our communities and opportunities the best. It is certainly true that all levels of government must do their part in working together toward achievement of the following, to be true partners, not just grant makers, to build the capacity of local agencies and institutions to meet the broader mandate, and to codify what works and remove impediments to creating locally informed, integrated approaches. To shed some light on these concepts, <clears throat> We can review a recent decision of our federal government to cut funding for affordable housing in Ontario, which locally meant a loss of $4.2 million in the funding the Thunder Bay VSAB had relied upon for capital repairs, operational funding, and new builds. Although it was reported that this decision was made because the Ontario government had built only 1,184 units of the 20,000 units agreed upon for the 10-year period of the National Housing Strategy, initiated in 2018. In fact, Ontario has built 11,000 of the 19,000 units required over 10 years. In addition, the 23, of the 23,000 units the province has asked to renovate and re repair, we have actually completed 123,000 units, which accounts to 426% of the target. Further, the, there exists the concern that under this federal housing funding model, the province would have to direct funds without input from municipalities and service managers. <coughs> we have also heard of the recent shock and disappointment in Kenora in, in the region, where despite the city of Kenora being acknowledged by the CMHC as surpassing the evaluation criteria on their aggressive housing application, Kenora did not receive any funding from the federal government. Over the past three years, Ontario has invested $4.4 billion for community and supportive housing while addressing homelessness and the impacts of the pandemic for Ontario's most vulnerable. The record shows that this funding has not been dependent on the, upon the political strengths of the local MPP or MP. The same can be said about the competing narratives around the province's ongoing commitment to spending billions and record levels of investment, investment to our publicly funded healthcare system. When recently celebrating with the people of Thunder Bay Atacokan that our province had invested an additional $30 million to our healthcare sector in 2023, the local opposition immediately provided a statement to the media that the majority of the funding is being funneled to for-profit care. Interestingly, no such for-profit clinic or organization, nor the supposed funding amounts were identified. As yet another example, our Thunder Bay Police Service, despite the consistent commitment of the new leadership in implementing purposeful and strategic actions for advancing reconciliation and addressing the serious concerns of the past, the narrative of disbanding our police service has persisted. All of this all of this despite the new leadership participating in fully with investigations into former police leadership and service members and remaining as transparent and as engaging as possible with the affected municipalities. I would respectfully submit to you the following questions. <clears throat> Have we really reached a place where the harmful actions of past leadership or staff invalidates the good intentions and the actions of the new guard, guard on our journey toward reconciliation and resolution? How do we hold on to hope that healing and changing the culture is still possible? Is regional economic development and prosperity a realistic vision when our political and community leaders cannot choose to come together and straight talk of the efforts required to create the environment that enables health and economic development? How do we inspire and stimulate the workforce and leaders of tomorrow when there exists such a culture of doom, gloom, and hopelessness? This conference continues to offer the invaluable opportunity to network, develop relationships, learn from, and honor and encourage each other. These, con these connections foster a sense of community that is often extended well beyond the boundaries of this event. So to all of you who are able to join us in Thunder Bay for this year's NOMA conference, we acknowledge your unwavering commitment in local and regional and economic well-being development that serves all the people in all of our communities. I want to thank each and every one of you for the work that you are undertaking 
for all of our futures. And I re remain committed and look forward to continue to working with you, for you. Thank you.